today we're checking out a board that you guys have been asking us to do an overview on and it is this one the MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX it's a bit of a mouthful to say but let's take a bit of a closer look As usual with our motherboard videos, these videos are not reviews, they're just overviews so we can take a look at what's physically on a new board like this and what comes in the box. So I'm going to stop talking, well I'm going to keep talking but we're going to take a closer look. Let's jump right in. Alright ladies and gents, here it is, the MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX. A whole lot of letters for a whole lot of motherboard. But first of all, what we're going to do is get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this board. First up, we have the back plate for the monoblock for this motherboard. This motherboard does not come with a stock AM4 back plate, rather the one that works with this monoblock from EK. Next up is a bunch of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's a bunch of assorted RGB cables, so some types of adapters and just every RGB cable you should probably ever need. There's also some thermal probes so you can measure temperatures at different parts of your system. There's a Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality on this motherboard. This is pretty standard for these types of motherboards. There's also some thermal paste and the mounting screws for the monoblock for this motherboard as well. There's also a set of thermal pads for the monoblock as well. You will need to apply this if you're using this motherboard. There's a set of keyring screwdrivers. There's a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver that comes with this motherboard. This is just making it easier if you don't have any tools to build your system. But if you're doing a water cooled PC, I'm sure you've got tools. There's also this little brush. These are very handy for cleaning your board. So if there's any dust or anything around your motherboard, you can use this to clean it up a little bit. MSI has done away with discs. They now have USB sticks with all the drivers and everything you need to get up and running. I'm glad that they use USB now. There's also screws and standoffs for the four M.2 slots on this motherboard, which we're gonna come back and take a look at a little bit later on in the video. There's a bunch of stickers that you can use here. They stick onto your battery or anywhere else on your motherboard. Most MSI boards now include this as well. There's a bunch of random pamphlets for different products and everything else in their product stack. Pretty standard for them to include this stuff with their motherboards. We've got the quick installation guide, which will teach you how to socket a CPU if you've never done that before. However, I'm guessing that if you're using this motherboard in particular, you may have built a PC before. If not, this can be very handy. There's also the user guide. Now this will basically tell you what everything is and where everything is on your motherboard and how to tweak a few things in the BIOS as well. And lastly, this little badge here. Now this little badge, if you put it on your case, will give you about 85 billion extra frames per second in Fortnite at 16K. Not really, I like to say that. I think that joke's getting a bit old now. Let's take a look at those other bitties. We've got the EK loop accessories. This is a leak tester, but I've prepared one earlier from another motherboard I've got. So this is what it looks like. And this basically helps you find leaks without having to fill up your loop. There's also the mono block itself. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at this mono block. So this is much like the Z590 Carbon EKX. You'll notice that it will cover the VRM and the CPU, and there's a little impeller that they use as a flow indicator. I actually like that they include this because it makes it easy to see if your loop's actually flowing, as well as you can see all of the contact points for the VRMs and the chokes on the back, on the bottom, and for the IHS of the CPU as well. Okay. Let's unsheath that brand new X570S Carbon EKX so we can take a closer look at everything that's on the board. Let's do it. All right, we've got a front panel audio header. There's a four pin 12 volt RGB header. There's two PWM fan headers. There's also two USB 2.0 headers, which are used for let, like RGB controllers and that kind of stuff these days. Not really anything else but that. There's also a USB 3.0 header, another PWM fan header. There's also a switch to turn off your RGB. 
There's the front panel header for all your lights and all your switches and all that jazz to let you know your system's on and a 3-pin 5V addressable RGB header. On the right hand side of the board we've got a USB 3.0 header, we've got 8 SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning RAS drives. There's a USB Type-C front panel header, there's a 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X570S Carbon EKX. There's a little diagnostic LED array for diagnosing your system, another PWM fan connector, and a Corsair RGB header. Next to that, there's a diagnostic LED screen. That's a postcode screen to help you figure out if something's happening when your system's booting, if it's not booting correctly. There's another three pin five volt addressable RGB header and three more PWM fan headers. There's two EPS power connectors here. There's an eight pin EPS power connector and a four pin supplemental EPS power connector as well. For PCIe slots, there's two full size by 16 slots. The top one is a by 16 slot, the bottom one is a by 4 slot, and there's also two by 1 slots in between as well. Because this board uses the X570S chipset, which is the silent version of X570, other than that, without it being actively cooled, there's no difference in functionality whatsoever. However, these X570S boards support Ryzen 5000 right out of the box without needing a BIOS update. The X570 Carbon EKX features a 14 plus two phase digital VRM setup. Obviously there's no VRM cooling that you can see because that's all part of the monoblock that ships with this motherboard. This board also features a standard AM4 socket that supports Ryzen 2000, 3000, 4000 APUs, Ryzen 5000 and Ryzen 5000 APUs as well. If we flip the board over, you can see that there's nothing really that exciting going on here other than the fact that it's missing a stock AIM-4 backplate. It doesn't come with this board at all and it has markings for keep out zones as well. For RAM, the Carbon EKX supports up to 128 gigs of DDR4 memory at 5300 MHz overclocked. I actually left this on because it's a good little reminder to remove the heatsink before you install the motherboard into the case because of the screws. But speaking of screws, let's undo the screws and take a bit of a look at all the M.2 slots on this board because this board features four PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. You heard that right? There's four of them in total. There's a lot of storage opportunity for this motherboard. And lastly, the rear IO, we've got a clear CMOS button, a BIOS flashback button, a PS2 combined mouse and keyboard port. There's a set of USB 2.0 ports. The rest are USB 3.2. There's an HDMI port if you're using a Ryzen APU. There's antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.0, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, USB Type-C and 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and speed output with an integrated IO shield. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed our first look and overview of the MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX. In terms of pricing and availability, EK's website is saying September 29th, the expected ship date for this board, and the Aussie price is 899 Australian dollars. Not quite sure about the US price. The EK website is region locked, and I can use a VPN to get around it, but the truth is, I can't be bothered. You guys can figure it out. I'll put a link in the description down below to the product page so you can basically click that and it will tell you how much this board costs. Okay, let's chat a little bit about this board and what exactly it is and who it's for. So in terms of who it's for, it's for people who obviously want to build a custom water-cooled gaming PC with a monoblock that covers the VRM and the CPU. That type of person is me because my gaming PC uses a motherboard that has a monoblock that covers everything. But the bonus of X570S over X570, other than it like having the S designation, the S means silent, so it doesn't actually need an actively cooled chipset anymore. So the water block doesn't need to extend all the way down the board, like with that ASRock Aqua board. All it needs to do is cool the VRM and the CPU itself. This board is actually exactly the same as the X570S carbon gaming Wi-Fi from MSI. We've also got one of those two. I don't think we're gonna be doing an overview on that board at all because this board is exactly the same and it would just be doubling up. Like literally the videos would be identical minus the monoblock not being on the other board. So we're not gonna be doing that at all. And I think that's just about gonna do it for this video. If you liked the video, you know what to do, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more of this type of content and any of our content and all that jazz and do everything that YouTubers usually tell you to do in their videos. 
Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and let's take a bit of a cinematic look at this thing. Thanks for watching. But stick around. Trust me, I can see the analytics. I know if you're leaving, I know. I have the numbers.